check out that exterior. But there are steps we have to go up, so I don't know how I feel about that. Hey guys, it's Michael Todd, and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. We are back at Old School Antiques here in Palmyra, Pennsylvania. We're gonna get inside, see what we can't find. Is it gonna be for live sale, eBay, or whatnot? I don't know. Let's see what we can get. Here we go. You're gonna get free exercise when you come here. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do this. Alrighty, guys, check out the interior. It smells really good in here. I can't deny. We do have some contemporary modern toys, a little bit of the vintage of oh, the old trucks. These are great, especially those metal ones. Some of the old Funko Pops there. Let's check it out. Now, there is a cafe on the interior. How beautiful! Great ambiance. Beautiful and bright. We love it. Oh, seeing some glass over here. Cute little planters. We've got our succulents already in there and ready for you. Ooh, let's see. What do we got in here? I love the backlighting on it. Go to town, let's hear it. <laughs> there is a piano. <laughs> oh, what are these two? Are these salt and pepper shakers? Yes, they are. They're at 16. Oh, they're playing. It's been so long since. What is that game? Leapfrog. Oh, my word. I couldn't. <laughs> Oh Lord. Oh, I like this. Nice satin. Not satin. Matte. Is that? Oh, it is ceramic. Thought maybe it might be a satin glass. We got a little utilitarian with some good personality. A little bit of kitsch. We've got some frogs. Ooh, up at the top, we've got some mushrooms even. Oh, I love the mushroom house with the butterfly on top. Look at that, so cute. Oh my word. You know what? Do we need this? It's a mushroom can. It's legit. It doesn't have, it's, it's not like bees, you know, those have mushrooms on it. This is an actual mushroom with a butterfly. And it's only 1850. What are you talking about? We do have a little chippy chip right here, but are we really gonna be that mad at it? Really though? You just take a little black Sharpie maybe? No, don't do that. I lied, don't do that. Take like a black watercolor. Let's get that. It's too stinking cute. I love the fact that they saran wrap that lid on there. I'm not skirt. Oh, look at that clock. Oh, wow. Now that is atomic. That's cute. Look at that color combination. Well, it turns out these are quite pricey, I gotta say. We do some discolor, some age discoloration there on the back. But oh my goodness, the color combination. The core looks to be in really good condition. 1875. They're going for about 40 to 65. I think we're gonna take a chance on this one. I am gonna see if I can plug it in somewhere to see if it runs before we make a final decision, but it's that color combo, or should I? I don't, uh, I'm gonna plug it in and see if it works. Safety reminder, always check the cords. I could have electrocuted myself, so we're gonna leave that one. <laughs> that would be cool for somebody that knows how to rewire it. Oh, that's a beautiful color combination though. Okay, glad we didn't plug that in though. Alrighty guys, we are gonna have to switch over to a voiceover from this point forward. I hope you don't mind. All right, so I was seeing a sale here. I honestly wasn't very excited. Like the items weren't necessarily speaking to me. There is a variety though. I did see like this little faux jade carved 
trinket little dish here. Very like 80s in style execution. Very popular during that era. Kind of like the butterflies. I saw this little lapel style brooch. I don't know. It was a little plain for my liking. So we are going to leave that one behind. It was reading a little older than I thought perhaps it actually was. A lot of records, I will say that. So if you are a vinyl or LP fan, you can certainly pick up some, some records here on sale, might I add. A lot of the Royal Dalton figurines here. I gotta say, they're not my favorite. Though I will say, them grouped together looks really pretty. See those little brass birds there with the green green eyes. Those were cute. Not priced where I would necessarily need them to be. Loving this old cabinet and how they have it with the Pyrex in here. Oh my goodness, I think it's great. That jadeite green color. It really does make the white pop out and then contrasted with those bright primary colors. I thought that looked fantastic. Alrighty guys, we're headed down here into the interior of the mall. Uh, we've got some cabinets here, obviously. I do like that footed green dish there. Very pretty. It was only $20. I'm surprised I didn't pick that one up. She's interesting. Very 80s, again, in style. Uh, ceramic trinket dish there. Cute, but again, just not priced where I necessarily need it to be. Now, this really caught my eye. I thought this was really interesting. They actually took their brooches and put them on the little leaves, so it's almost like a garden of uh, jewelry there. I think that would be a really cute idea if you were to execute that in your home in some way. Perhaps even frame just to kind of set it out a little bit more. Now I did see this art pottery here. I thought uh, I thought that it might have been an earlier Van Briggle or a hand-thrown weather piece. There was no signature on it. Now that's just not to say that it couldn't be either. Um, not every single... It, it, hand-thrown artisan piece was signed it very well i could have just set down an earlier piece but i wasn't entirely sure so we did have to leave that behind i don't like picking things up um without certainty in that regard because the aesthetic is very simple um the thing that's really going to propel it is of course it's limited edition not limited edition it's limited nature um so it wasn't mass produced but again without knowing I'm going to leave it behind. But as, as I always say, just because it's Weller doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to pick up on it. Or it could have been Van Brickle. Now this booth is full of a lot of stuff. It doesn't really have a whole lot of the vintage or antiques that I am looking for. They're kind of sprinkled in throughout. But it looked like there could have been something in here. I really wasn't seeing a whole lot, though I do like the drama and the comedy mask there. Clever. A little bit uh, the colonial, as I like to call it, or the primitive. I know a lot of people will, will refer to it as. Do have some newer items over there to the right. Not really, again, what we're looking for. So we're going to jump here to the next booth. A little bit of the mid-century glass sprinkled in there. It's a very empoliary Italian style. Uh, we do have some Ellie Smith here. I will say I do like that uh, that yellow coin dot back there. That was an unusual color and shape to it. Not not your typical brandy snifter. And then I did spot a little piece of Viking glass. This is in the smoke glass. Um, Viking. This was actually later in Vikings run, and they did not make a lot of it. Um, very mid-century in color, kind of like that 60s and 70s mod vibe to it. Um, unfortunately, it just wasn't a piece. It wasn't like a swung vase or it wasn't uh, all that intricate. Um, that kind of like open compote is well, the pedestal compote. I don't really, uh, it can be a tough sell. It's a very specific buyer. This is great. It's a little mini Westmoreland Agronaut. I absolutely love it. It's so tiny and cute. Um, the vendor definitely have it priced fair. It's just, again, not where I need it to be. And I love it in that mustery yellow. I wouldn't quite call it amber and it's not smoke. It's kind of somewhere in between. Pretty little uranium glass dish there, but at $45, not so much. I think that one honestly is a little high for that piece, just given that it's a very simple 
uh, sculpt. We do have a piece of Roosevelt here. Unfortunately, we do have some damage. And you know how we like to do here at the Cult of Vintage is we spot the Roseville and then spot the damage. <laughs> Again, not to say that somebody can't love it. And sometimes those pieces make great introductory pieces. Or if you're just a casual collector. And you know what? Gosh darn it. There are some people out there that absolutely love the damage on it because they like the story. They like the character to it. And it just goes to prove that as the saying goes to each their own. We've got that red mod wall there, again, very mid-century, and jumping out was what appeared to me to be a McCoy. Nope. <laughs> He's got a little chippy on his lipper there, so we're gonna leave him behind, but right above it was some pretty Fenton in that jadeite color. Now, some of this will glow, some will not. They did have it marked as uranium. We do have a stamp, so we know they're 71, 1971 or later. I did happen to have my flashlight, and she does, in fact, glow. It's a pretty glow, priced very fairly. It's a little bit below retail, I will tell you that so there wasn't too much room for me but most definitely it was a good get for a collector uh this piece is labeled as roseville i gotta say i don't know the handles on it there are too thick they should be a little bit more refined more delicate dainty if you will so i don't know that that was an original roseville please correct me in the comments if i am wrong but i did see that cameo weller there, I thought that was very pretty. It is in a um, like a medium glaze, so it's not a matte, which would indicate that it was an earlier piece. Uh, they started to introduce more high gloss glazes as they went into the mid century. So it was probably like a like a forties and mid forties piece. Beautiful little baby blanket. It is a chenille. Obviously, the pink, and I love the fact that the white little rabbit has that pink eye. So he's a little albino bunny. I gotta say, I don't do that well with the baby blankets because there's just not enough fabric. And, and sometimes for a lot of people, it's just not a very practical thing. I do like seeing them. So I wanted to capture it on video. Uh, just like the granny square Afghan there priced at $15. Again, that is very reasonable. Think of any of you knit or crochet, you know that the just the cost of the yarn is probably triple that and that doesn't even factor in the amount of time that goes into making those afghans so again i do say i recommend checking out your linens especially looking for those afghans both crocheted and knitted um, people really do love them and i think there's a lot of respect uh, for the cost of goods as well as the time i think this might be the find of the day <laughs> five dollars i was like what is there something wrong with it now they do have it labeled as an italian glass we do see here see a silver label on it i'm not familiar with it i think that the glaze is absolutely stunning we do have like a pulled feather effect almost to it that oil slick iridescence it is a good quality piece of glass i'm not seeing inclusions in it the aesthetic is on point we're gonna snatch that up for five bucks Talking about aesthetic, I absolutely love the color palette that this vendor chose. Beautiful coloring. Now these caught my eye. Uh, these are definitely dinosaurs. I absolutely love these as a child. Um, they're priced very reasonable. They do, of course, have their dinosaur. Then they have their little ride for the little caveman or woman as on the t-rex there i love these these i thought they were priced really reasonable again all of the parts were included as well as the little poster and instruction booklets absolutely love this one how the little caveman is being uh carried around almost like a, a little baby i did decide to run some quick comps but unfortunately, I found out that's actually really about all they're worth. Um, actually, I would say I would argue a few dollars less than retail simply because they have the booklet, the dinosaurs, the rides and the cavemen all pieced together. And I think for a vintage toy collector, that definitely adds value to it rather than having to piece it together. And Michael, stop. Just let it go. <laughs> 
we have some neon signs here going on. Oops, the boob is peeking. Can't capture them. This, I absolutely love how this vendor chose to display their items, especially all of these small items. Obviously, they took some white cardboard, put them in poly bags, and then they kind of have like string or little hang or hanging hooks to display them. It makes it so much easier to shop these. At the top, you're seeing the little wooden dolls there, Betty Boop. Uh, there was Popeye. There were two military. I wanted to get up a little bit closer. Betty Boop, you lost your top lady. I actually do have the Popeye. Um, he's there. Just, I just absolutely love those. But a lot of like kind of the um, antiques, if you will. That's not to say that ladies can't get into the ashtrays. I know that some of them do enjoy ashtrays. Oh my gosh, I just found a clown um, baby food warmer. There is Donald, so the head is removable and you would pour your hot water and that does keep the food warm. There is an actual piece of Van Briggle. Now this would have been part of a three-piece console set, two candlesticks and a console bowl. I'm loving this piece. It's very delicate, um, but it's very specific. Peels like beer. I saw the gnome and I was like, gnome! <laughs> we do have some cigarette cards here. Those are your birds. Those are definitely collectible and have some great value on them. Uh, it was just a little trading card that would come in packs of cigarettes. It kind of, you know, addiction aside, you could become addicted to the trading cards, I guess. I <laughs> But again, a great way to display those smalls. I was really impressed. Um, I've not seen that before, so definitely had to capture that on camera. Down below here, we are seeing some more of those vintage toys. We got some Ventelling Huggies. We do have some of the hand-carved bottle stoppers. Now, those do look like they are articulated. Various poses, mouse would open, arms would drop down. Perhaps even a top hat or two would come down. Uh, creepy dolls. I mean, another thing that we like to do here, apparently, at the Cult of Vintage. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't plan these things. They just happen. Yeah, although the plant coming out of the baby's head, that one was really cute. Oh, goodness. This one I really loved. Ew, she's in a little tin, a little dress. She's a little chatterbox. She legitimately is a little chatterbox. It was $10. I thought it was cute. I didn't get it, but I do think that it is very cute. Love the dinosaur. With, you want a mason jar full of doll parts. There you go. And then check out this one. I think this is a piece de resistance. This Tyrannosaurus Rex with the clown head and the doll head balloons. Like what nightmare fuel is this? No, I'm just kidding. I don't think this is very nightmare. I absolutely love it. I think it's super fun. Had to get that on camera. Alrighty guys, that is it for upstairs. We're gonna head on downstairs and then you're gonna see something. Don't worry, I'm obviously totally okay. Um, but it was a little embarrassing and you're gonna say, all right, about whoop, we're good. <laughs> I made it down the stairs fine. That is why I don't normally record going down the stairs. You'll see me start to go down the stairs and then finish at the stairs. I can do it going up, but going down for some reason always confuses uh, my mind. Lots of goodies in here. I do dig that that twisted stem, that brandy sniffed it back there. Again, I believe, is this the same vendor? I don't know. Could be. But I, I, I really like how that is displayed, all of those smalls. It's just, it's so much easier to see. Now I did see some little kids books sticking out here, very like up 40s and 50s. These are the three little kittens. It's not by an artist that I am familiar with. They're okay. It's very Ruthie Newton in style. Uh, the pages seem to be printed long ways, folded in half, and then they were stapled in together, which I thought was really interesting. That kind of confused me, but you can see I'm separating the pages there. I was like, oh, those stuck together? No, that's just how you're made. Three little kittens. You're cute, but you're going back underneath there. Who else is under here? Let's see. The town mouse. Not so much. Uh, let's see, are we going to find anything else? I don't know. Oh, and then I spot 
Oh, do I not spot him right away? Mm, Michael, you're slack. And he was right there. Cute little baby cupie. I actually found one of these before uh, in pink. Now, it didn't have painted eyes, but... Oh, I didn't spot. I didn't spot. I spotted it on the way back. Good thing I did. Got a lot of little bisque figurines here. Typically Japan. Maybe even some made in occupied Japan. It's got to have really unusual subject matter. These two are really cute. I have one that is similar. This is a made in occupied Japan. Uh, at $5, I think that's a good price. Um, I forget what mine are doing. I think they're at a campfire now that I'm thinking about it. But near identical size and, and, and uh, stop sculptural detailing. Mm, oh, we got some wiener dog shakers, $3. And then I did, oh, bless him. He fell off at some point and he was repaired. So, I mean, hey, at $3, I think that's darn good. Again, just like I said upstairs, there's plenty of collectors out there who don't even mind. It's not even a question about seeing past it. Some people actually like it. Um, again, things have a story to tell. Now, I've spotted this here before. I've only been here once before. So this Castle Grayskull is still here. And of course, it is He-Man. There are a few pieces that are missing. But overall, the cardboard inserts are still there, which is pretty darn impressive. That's usually what is missing. But it's like some weapons that are missing so those are typically pretty easy to find online oh you see that glass i know you do but don't you worry there's some more glass right over here so we've got some of the viking um i love the six petal you have the epic drape over there in the avocado what are you doing michael i don't know i was confused <laughs> i love these drapery styles 75 dollars hmm uh, uh. In today's market anymore, that's about on point, even for the smaller ones. Those swung vases are becoming incredibly hard to find. Look at that. Oh, it's huge. I love that diamond point. It looks severe. But those swung vases are, are so exceptionally difficult to find anymore. And any kind of a value that would leave room for resale on them. So we can admire it, but we're going to have to leave those there. Uh, the large diamond point compote that is priced at 110 if I am remember 110 or 125 if I'm remembering correctly. Now that piece I think is a darn good get deal, especially given its size. And then I spot it. Oh yeah, we do. We spot some amethyst glass over there. Now it is a ewer, uh, and unfortunately at the bottom there's a pretty substantial uh, crack running through it, so. We're not going to get that. Love that Amberina picture, though, with that long neck on it. We've got some more. Is it? I can't see the petals. Yes, it is uh, Viking. I do spot some Benton hand-painted. I thought it was really pretty. The price was not where we needed it to be. We're back to that Empoli. Those optic patterns. Look at what the light does. Ooh, that was creepy. And then I spotted them. What are you talking about? Two wall mermaids? I was like, huh? $50. I mean, for a mermaid of that size? Oh, they're Holland molds. It's kind of difficult. Or Atlantic mold, pardon me. No, this one's Atlantic. I believe the other one says Holland, now that I'm thinking about it. We've got a brunette here. She's swimming through the sea. And it's for the pair. We're going to get her sister, the blonde, to go with her. That is a steal for mermaids. Oof. No, it did. Look at this. Yes, there's Mary Mushrooms. I've seen this before. Um, they're just not priced where I would need them to be and what we're going after. Look at this little sad eye. Yes, he is. $22. Apparently, he was $9.99 somewhere. Look at those big green eyes. Now, at $22, these can go for some really good money. But at $22, I didn't really feel like I was going to risk it. And then I saw this piece, 85 Firm. It's a banana dog. I was like, what is this? Is it really worth $85? I'm like, hmm. It's like a polystone. It was contemporary. So we decided to try to do a little research. Apparently, banana dog is a thing. Now, I don't know this specific manufacturer, but if you do search banana dog, you will see there's quite a few figurines that go for some good money. Here is the item that I left behind. It is the Happy Go Lucky. He is the musical ducky. He is a dollar because he doesn't work. I don't care, little ducky. You're going to come home. He's got some pitting on him, a little paint wear. It's so charming. It is perfect. I love him. 
definitely got him. So what do we have? A mushroom canister. We've got some mermaids. We got a ducky. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, variety is the spice of life, right? Alrighty, now we are still downstairs. We are in the second part of the downstairs. This is actually to your immediate right when you come down the stairs. Where we were, you would just walk directly in front of you. I think I captured that angle uh, on camera. I don't know that I captured this way, though. Uh, we got some py Pyrex there, the primaries. Uh, again, I'm not really spotting a whole lot here. Some cute things, but just nothing that was really calling my name. I actually did recently find a set of these two similar. They are not identical. Darn, I should have got those for eight dollars. It's I literally earlier in the day had picked them up. That's why I put them back. Eight dollars, I think, is a darn good price. He does have a little bump there to his paint on his nose. It's not the world's worst, but it is still there. And I think that really added to my decision to go ahead and leave those two behind. They're not as grumpy as the ones. I've... <laughs> those two look a little bit happier. Uh, they got better grades apparently or something like that. Mm, again, I'm just not really spotting a whole lot. Some cute things. I love the inkwell there. And the ink blotter, yeah, pretty. Look at that, that milk glass insert. That thing was clean. You even have a little calendar there. Pretty little set. Mm, yeah, not so much. Some pretty jewelry, but again, just nothing that was really jumping out. Like the color palettes, though, I will say that. Those neutrals with that brass, it really pops out at you. Add a little green and some black, bam. It's a whole look. And these were really cute little nesting dolls. I love this blue chicken. <laughs> now, it does read a little contemporary, of course. At $21, I was like, uh, no, thank you. You're going to stay there. The striped cat was okay. All right, guys, we're going to move on here into another booth. Now, there is a lot of apparel in here, but... Here in the center, we do have some racks of hard goods, so I do want to check these out. I have to say, I think these racks came from a Pier 1. <laughs> Not mad at it. I mean, hey, reduce, reuse, recycle, right? They didn't end up in a landfill anywhere. Again, a lot of good stuff, but just not the stuff that I'm really looking for. Why, hello, kitty. And this is the last booth that we are going to be in, you guys. Fortunately, I didn't really spot anything else for today's shopping adventure. So I'm going to go ahead and do the wrap up outside. I'll see you there. Alrighty, guys, there you have it. Another successful shopping trip at Schoolhouse Antiques here in Palmyra, Pennsylvania. I hope that you guys did enjoy today's shopping uh, trip. It was fun. It's always a pleasure. Great location, beautiful building, not to mention a very wonderful owner. Thank you very much. And remember, if you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It's for free and I'd appreciate it. And for everybody down in the comments, let me know what your favorite find of the day is, or let me know the item you wish I had most picked up. Either works. And until next time, guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.